Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Michael Fletcher. I am back, and I must apologize to all you guys tonight. We've had a major issue. Um, we try to do this on the Google for all you fans out there who loves to listen to us live on uh, on YouTube.com. However, we did have some major technical difficulties. Unfortunately, we were unable to do it. So we have you here live on Uvu. And we are going to direct that and transfer that over to at the end with the great fans of you guys. So we're going to do it. We're going to try to do it as fast as we can to try to get the show done. And within reason, um, we'll do. We'll go from there. So I went Anthony Florio and Michael Bullock. Um, fellas, if we're ready to go, we're just going to start from the top. And we're just going to re- refresh the fans' memories, and then we'll go with the show itself. The first thing that we talked about was the John Cena promo with Vicky Guerrero and Ryback. Let's just give us a brief summary, and then we'll go from there. Mike Bullock, you start. You start us off. Uh, I would think to start off the show. I mean, like I said, it wasn't the greatest uh, segment, but I thought it was a really good segment. I mean, like I said, when uh, John Cena, I mean, I can't be comedy nonsense. I mean, we, Sometimes we don't like it, but this was really acceptable. I mean, with him using Ryback's uh, sound and voice, and then he's going to find the tomatoes movie thing, and that was really funny. So. And, and, of course, Ryback saying that this is now going to be a uh, last man standing match. So, yeah, this could be a very brutal match here. So, all in all, a good solid segment to uh, start off the show. All right, Anthony Florio. Yeah, I said it was a solid segment as well. I enjoyed when Cena did the uh, the mockery of Ryback. I thought that was kind of funny, if I'm being honest. Even though I usually don't know, um, I usually don't laugh at, at the comedy stuff they do normally. But I mean, you know, I, I enjoyed the segment for the most part. I mean, Ryback's getting better. He needs, he still needs a little work, if I'm being honest, when it comes to the live mic stuff, but he is getting better. I'm loving this new heel role of his. So, yeah, um, solid segment all around, even though seen at times was that over-the-top PG poster boy, as, as we all know and love, and we don't. So, yeah, um, solid segment to start the show. Last man standing, coming up at Extreme Rules, looking forward to it. Uh, of course, when you think Cena and Last Man Skin, you can't help but think about the awesome match he had with Eddie D. Umaga Fat 2 uh, back at Royal Rumble 07, so, which was a solid four and a quarter, four and a half star bout, as you all know. So, yeah, solid fights. I mean, solid fights. Solid, solid uh, promo statement to start with the show. So, let's just move on. Yes, indeed. Solid segment, no doubt about it. I can't disagree with that one bit. Um, we're just going to move on. And the first fight of the night was Randy Orton versus Damian Sandow. Anthony, it's all yours. I said it was a two to two. I said it was a two to two and a quarter star fight. I felt it was a little too short for my liking. It felt like an Orton Barry job at some times. And yeah, um, one week he, one, uh, last week he goes up against Cody Rhodes has a four star match when we all thought it was going to be a dud enhancement fight. But. Here, well, this was not a dud enhancement fight by any means, but it was a solid, okay fight. Nothing really special. Nothing really wow like the Orton Rhodes fight from last week, but but still two to two and a quarter stars. I thought it was a respectable fight. I could probably say maybe third best fight of the night, if I'm being honest. So, And then, and then of course, Big Show jumps Randy Orton afterwards. So, yeah, I think we can expect to see an Orton-Big Show fight at, of some sort at Extreme Rules, no doubt. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Let's move on to you, Fletcher. One and a half stars was my rating on the match. I really thought it, it could have been a lot better. It was a more of an Orton Barry job, to say the very least. And I'm just not going to go any more further. Mike Bullock, it's yours. Yeah, um, of course, earlier I did rate it two and a half and three stars, but I have to actually backtrack now because, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it did feel like an Orton Barry job here. I mean, it was still a good. A good okay match, uh, nothing amazing, nothing that makes me jump out of my seat. So, two stars is what I'll, I'll give it here. I mean, I mean, Randy Orton. I mean, he goes from having a four star match with Cody Rhodes to only a two star match with Damian Sandow. Uh, yeah, uh, but all in all, I mean, it was good for what it was worth. And then, you know, of course, the big show knocking out Randy Orton. He gets to the ramp and. 
I think we're possibly going to get a match between these two at, uh, at Extreme Rules. Uh, I don't know what the stipulation will be, but we'll have to wait and see as we get if we go down the road. But two stars is my rating for the match, so with that being said, let's just move on. The next play that we have was Fandango one-on-one with R-Truth. I'm sorry, I got to give it a non-rating here. Uh, I really didn't like the match at all. I think they had tons of funk in Chris Jericho there. Just a critique, plus the fin- plus the match itself uh, ends in a DQ winner with R-Truth. I didn't like it at all. I thought it was a waste of time and a horrible match, to say the very least. Um, Michael Bullock is yours. I'm going to pull the trigger. Absolute dud. Worst fight of the night. Thankless, unnecessary, unacceptable, inexcusable, irresponsible, borderline reprehensible. And what was the point of this match being on TV? Really? Really? And then you really, and then you had to have Chris Jericho and Stunt the Punk as judges to judge the match and dances? Ah. Uh, yeah, this whole candy comedy, full funky, jobly group. I mean, I don't like it. It's a complete and utter rubbish. It's a complete waste of time. Yeah, under two minutes. Thanks a lot, WWE, for wasting my time with this match. So, uh, uh, absolute dead, worst part of that. I got nothing more to say. Boring, which hurts. Yeah, I agree. I mean, absolute dud. One of the worst fights of the night. For me, it's one of the three worst fights tonight. I thought there were two others that were just as bad, if not worse, if I'm being honest. Absolutely horrific segment. I mean, it was absolutely horrible from start to finish. I love Chris Jericho. We all do. We all love his body of work. We all think he's a damn good wrestler. We all know that. But, yeah, this was an absolute disaster. And I hate to say it, boys. Spoiler alert. It goes from bad to worse. Next week, if you didn't see the promo at the end, near the end of the show, brace yourselves, boys. Fandango and Chris Jericho are going to have a dance-off next week. You heard me right, folks. Fandango and Chris Jericho in a dance-off. Really? We just had to sit through friggin' Fandango and the great Kali in a dance-off. Now we got to sit through this? I mean, I understand Chris Jericho was on Dancing with the Stars. I get that. But really? We have to sit through this monstrosity again? Mass rants next week. You heard it here first. Mass rants. I don't know what else there is to say. But the only thing, that, but I will say the same thing before we wrap it up here for this segment, and that is, I still think it's going to be Jericho and Fandango at Extreme Rules in a Falls Count Anywhere match. That's my thing. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Let's move on to you, Fletch. Most definitely, no doubt about it. I am not looking forward to seeing that next week on Monday Night Raw. I might be doing one of these bits, basically watching it with one eye open throughout the night. Uh, let's just move on. The next fight that we had was Alberto De Rio going one-on-one with Dolph Ziggler. And, well, this was a tremendous match, to say the very least. Uh, unfortunately, Del Rio won the match by DQ. Uh, basically, Biggie Langston got involved in the fight. And then Jack Swagger, who was out at ringside, uh, attacks everybody in, involved. And, well, let's just... Mike Bullock, it's yours, man. Take it. All right, uh, to me, this is, to me, if I'm going to say it, I think this was the fight of the night in my court. I mean, because we, I thought we had some really good action here between these, between Del Rio and, uh, and Dolph Ziggler. If I had to write this, I probably would have had to say maybe three to maybe three and a quarter stars, and I thought the DQ really hurt it a little bit. I mean, if we had a nice clean finish. I would have said three and a half, maybe four stars, because this was a fun match here and was really getting good until, obviously, the disqualification, uh, which absolutely killed it, so I had to take points away for that, so three to three and a quarter stars, definitely the fight of the night, and it definitely uh, really sets the tone for the, uh, the triple threat, uh, World Heavyweight Championship ladder match, uh, at extreme rules. I mean, with the ladder being, uh, on the play of the, I mean, after the match by uh, Jack Swagger, so final of the night, three to three and a quarter stars, so whoever really wants it next, whoever wants it next, take it. I'll take it. Um, I mean, well, I mean, I'm going to make it three for three here, quite of the night, no question about it. 
Overall, I thought the match was three and a half stars, but I'm, but I'm going to project a quarter here because of the clunky finish. So three and a quarter stars is my rating. And, um, yeah, I mean, very good match overall. A lot of great near falls, great action here. These two never disappoint. They have great chemistry together. And, yeah, I mean, but, I, but I'll be honest with you. I enjoyed the post-match. I mean, the live crowd loved it in Roanoke, Virginia. They loved it. I loved it. I mean, and just imagine what it's going to be like when those three go at it with ladders involved at Extreme Rules. We're looking at four to four and a quarter. Easy, if I'm being honest. We could be definitely looking at a fight of the night candidate for sure. And it's going to be another reason why the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. I, I want to be honest with you. I think the Extreme Rules pay-per-view should be, should be what I would consider the unofficial fifth major. If I'm being honest, you know how like you know how golf has you know the Masters, the PGA Championship, and all that good stuff. Well, they call the Players Championship the unofficial fifth major. I think Extreme Rules is that new fifth major because this is a, a must-see pay-per-view. It's a worthy pay-per-view, and if, in case you haven't noticed, the last two Extreme Rules pay-per-views last year and the year before, two of the greatest PG era pay-per-views I ever saw in my life. If I'm being honest, I mean. Rated right around eight and a half to nine out of ten. That's how good those shows were, folks. And with the way this card is shaping up, we could be heading it. We could be heading in that direction for a third year. And who knows? I mean, we could if, if they keep doing what they're doing with this pay per view, we could be looking at. We could be once again going on the record and saying this 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 could end up being better than WrestleMania. As a matter of fact, you're gonna hear first. I think Extreme Rules is gonna be better than WrestleMania. There's no question about it. Because of how disappointing WrestleMania was, even though my life stadium looked great. But, you know, story for another day. But overall here, fight of the night, very enjoyable for the most part. Love the love the post fight, but it's three and a quarter stars, although it was a three and a half star fight. Ladder matches are my thing. When it comes to me, you know how much I love the technical, but the ladder match is the closest thing to a technical match when it comes to the hardcore element. It's out of out of all the hardcore fights, this one's my favorite. Up there with the Elimination Chamber and the Hell in a Cell. So, looking forward to it. Can't wait. You got you got fight of the night candidate for sure. But as of right now, early projection. I still think Ziggler keeps the belt. So let's just move on. Three star fight, tremendous match. Without a doubt, this is clearly the fight of the night. I am not going to dispute that at all. Uh, this was just a great match all the way around. Great near falls, great action, great interaction by everybody involved. It was just a tremendous fight from beginning to end. And I do agree with you, Anthony. I think this Extreme Rules is going to be really good. Maybe, maybe better than WrestleMania, like it has been for the last couple of years. Uh, I do agree with that. I think the streak will continue we'll just wait and see what happens there um next up we had was the shield going up against kofi kingston and the uso brothers in a six-man tag team fight the winners the shield anthony it's yours gotta make a correction here um i said the orton sandow fight was um no no you know what no i'm, I'm gonna keep it as it is uh I'm going to say the second best fighter tonight, if I'm being honest. Uh, solid two and a half stars. I mean, good action from near start to finish. I mean, Fletch and I, we saw this fight on the phone, and we were thinking, yeah, it's probably going to be three enhancement workers. Um, and then last time I checked, Kofi Kingston, not an enhancement worker. After all, he is the U.S. champ. Usos, at times, they can be enhancement workers, if I'm being honest, but... You know, uh, at least they got a shot to play with the big boys here. So, um, very good match. No big surprise the Shield won. You knew they would. Um, I mean, it's obvious now that the Shield are on a collision course with Team Hell No for the Tag Team Championship. I think it's going to happen at Extreme Rules, and if it does, new champs, boys. I don't know what else there is to say about that. I mean, WWE is very high up on the Shield body of work. I mean, the plan... From what I've heard on my uh, Wrestling News World website that I, you know, read a lot, my daily inbox email that I get, the plan is right now for the Shield to possibly capture the Tag Team Championship. And if they do that, that's great character progression. I mean, a lot of people are saying, oh, they keep doing the same thing each and every week. Well, you put the tag belts on them, we're going to be taking them a lot more seriously. And, I, and I'm going to tell you all what I said to Fletch earlier in the show. Well, two things. First off, the Shield... Best stable in WWE in years. They put the Nexus and the core combined to a shame. 
And I told you that, Flex. Don't don't forget that. I told you that earlier. And um, and here's the other thing. I don't know if you saw the finishing sequence of that fight, Bullock, but Flex and I did. I mean, did you see that move that Dean Ambrose did on Kofi Kingston? He dropped his head. He dropped him on his head. Oh, my God. Oh. Man, I'm going to be having nightmares about that pop. I mean, he dropped him on his freaking head. Oh, man. He's going to be feeling that one in the morning. I think he's going to be needing a lot of extra strength Tylenol if I do, if you, if you know what I mean. So, oh, my goodness gracious. Two and a half stars, second best fight of the night, loving the shield. And all I can say is the more shield on me get on our TV, the better. And, oh, by the way, if they do, if they do, get, the, if they do get the tag team title shot at Extreme Rules or whenever, Please put the belt on them. They're ready. They deserve it. Enough said. Move on. Two and a half stars, without a doubt. I agree with Anthony Floyd on the rating. The match was a very good match. And yes, the bump was sickening enough. I had to turn my head. Um, and I don't do that very often, but I had to do it this time around. Kofi Kingston landed on his head. He ate it hard tonight, man. I mean, that's, well... I guess I guess he's gonna have he, if he's gonna have a Tylenol, having a new little baby is not gonna help him any as well. Uh, good match, all in all, I enjoyed it. Um, Mike Bullock is yours. I agree. Second best fight of the night. Uh, I'll make a three three and say a two and a half stars. Uh, the Shield continues to be very impressive uh, in their in their debut, and, and all I can say is. Uh, yeah, when I saw Dean Ambrose perform that move on Kofi Kingston, I mean, oh, that was sick. I mean, I literally had to turn my head, and I I even had to put a over my uh, over my head just because. I mean, all I can say is he's definitely gonna, Kofi Kingston's going to be taking a lot of time and all probably in the next few days after Brandon on that like that. I mean, and yes, I agree with Anthony. I think the Shield will get their title shot. I think. It's will happen at Extreme Rules against Team Helbo. And I think that and I think they're ready for it. I think they're ready to have the belt put on them and this is really been a really good stable here with these guys and they make the they make the the Nexus and the the core combined look like the enhancement uh, workers here. I mean they make those groups look like the they look like groups so I love the Shield's body of work, and all I can say is that this definitely makes them a really legitimate threat. So, all I can say is, uh, second best fight of the night, uh, two and a half stars, so with that being said, let's move on. And we will move on to the next fight. It was Antonio Cesaro one-on-one with Zack Ryder. I will take this, fellas. Okay, not the best fight at all. And, and this was another dud. You could say it's another throwaway, whatever. However, it looks like Antonio Cesaro is finally out of the doghouse. Well, for some odd reason, he wound himself in the doghouse. They started making him doing this yodeling crap that I think we all can agree was pointless, unnecessary, unacceptable. Tonight, he finally looked... Like Antonio Cesaro, the former United States heavyweight champion. D- this was Cesaro's best performance in a while. And I think he's finally out of the doghouse. And if he is, and if they give him the rub, like I think he might get, like Anthony thinks he might get, Mike Bullock, and I know if Ferrero was here, if it, I think if we all can agree that he's he might get a push again, he might become a big top prime time player again. And oh by the way, he's actually one of the people that we're going to be talking about in one of our yes and no segments. Thanks to our great fans out there tonight, and I will bring that up a little bit later on. Anthony, uh, actually no, it goes to Mike Bullock. Mike Bullock, what do you think about the Ryder versus Cesaro fight? Anyway, yeah, to me, uh, I mean, I'm going to say this was a dud. I mean, another one of the of the night here, and, but I do agree. I think Antonio Cesaro is definitely finally making the turn. He's making the turn out of the doghouse, and 
He's looking like the, the man that was once the United States champion because last few weeks they've been making him look like a freaking tool for goodness sakes. And, and that's not right with the, with the way his body of work is. So who knows? Maybe we could be looking at him or maybe give him a shot at the United States champion and finally get the United States championship back around him. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see on that. But the match, to me, another uh, another one of the worst fights in the night. So, Anthony, it's yours. Yeah, I agree. Another dud, another one of the worst fights tonight. This was one of those other two worst fights of the night that I mentioned earlier. Um, the burial of Zack Ryder continues, and you know our uh, our fa- our new favorite website, BBG Nokel, and uh, I can see it yeah, now. Bad love Zack Ryder. He's all over the place tonight. I mean, gets booked on Monday Night Raw, gets squashed by Antonio Cesaro in about two minutes. Yep, the burial continues, folks. Oh wow, the mighty have fallen. As for Antonio Cesaro, I told Fletch this earlier, and I'm going to reiterate it. Um, I had actually heard that one of the reasons why they made him look like a tool and a doofus for so long was because CM Punk actually went to bat for the guy. I mean, literally. I mean, he literally went to bat for Antonio Cesaro. I mean, during WrestleMania week, I mean, he was, he did a radio interview in which uh, he wore an Antonio Cesaro T-shirt. I mean, that's all there was, that's all I can remember about it, and he. Literally went to bat for him, and so in all in all, I mean, decisive win, check. Boastful promo, check. No yodeling, major check. Much, much better. The yodeling thing absolutely had to go. It was beyond the point of go away. I mean, and now WWE is finally making this guy look like he had been for the last few months. Fun to watch. And Fletch, I mean, I, I can't believe you guys forgot about the promo. I mean, that promo after the fight, that promo was one of the best promos, short and sweet. I don't care how short and sweet it was. Yeah, it was one of the that was one of the best damn promos I've heard in a long, long time. Antonio Cesar, I mean, yeah, the match was an absolute dud. It was a, it was, a, it was really horrific. It was a horrific fight, but but Antonio Cesaro, folks, he's back. He's back. Watch it. He's back. Move on. He is back and better than ever. No doubts about it, Anthony. Well said uh, from beginning to end. And now let's go to, well, what I think might be the promo segment of the night. Paul Heyman interrupted by Triple H. And we all know what happened. If you've been reading Twitter all day, Paul Heyman and his client Brock Lesnar infiltrated the WWE headquarters in Stanford, Connecticut, and Lesnar destroys Triple H's office. Um, you saw it. You saw it with your own eyes. Mike Bullock, it's yours, my friend. You're the lucky dog. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely say it. Second of the night here. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I mean, word got out of this, uh, when I saw it on my, uh, WWE, uh, app, uh, with the breaking news, I mean, him and they, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar invading Triple H's, uh, WWE headquarters, destroying Triple H's office, and everybody in that office, I mean, looks scared and intimidated of Brock Lesnar, and heck, if I was working in that office, I'd be intimidated too, and heck, Maybe I'd be hiding under the desk. I mean, I wouldn't want anything to do with Brock Lesnar. But boy, howdy, I mean, all I can say is, I mean, if this match was already, uh, this match was already personal, though, well, it got taken to another level now because of what he did to Triple H's office. And, and I think because of that, I think because of that, we'll definitely look at a much better matchup than what we saw at SummerSlam uh, in 2012 and, of course, at WrestleMania. I thought the WrestleMania match is better, but to me, I think Extreme Rules is definitely the, the matchup between these two at Extreme Rules in a steel cage. I think it's going to be better. I'm hoping for maybe a four to maybe a, I'm, I would say probably a four-star match if I have to, if they give it the right amount of time. But we'll have to wait and see on that. But all in all, Segment of the night, everybody played their part so uh, well, including the game Triple H when he said, well, I got more than, I, I don't have just the office at my headquarters, I have another office, and back in the ring, 
So, definitely segment of the night. And so, with that being said, uh, Anthony, it's your segment of the night. No question about it. I mean, Fletch and I, we watched this live, and all I could say was we were marking out like crazy, man, because this was so freaking awesome to watch. I mean, Brock Lesnar, I mean, okay, boy, howdy, what are you doing? Now? How, how did you know, how, how could we tell it was Triple H's office? How could we tell? We, we needed to find some defining items that could make it Triple H's office. Oh, yeah, World Heavyweight Championship belt from the days of evolution. Awesome. I marked the minute I saw that. And Fletch knows. He knows of the love affair I had with that World Heavyweight Championship belt back in the day. No question about it. Sledgy. The sledgehammer. Or as Fletch likes to call it, sledgy. Awesome. And then look what he does. He takes the sledgehammer and he does what a la Mr. Perfect did to Hulk Hogan's old WWF championship on Saturday night's main event. He destroys it. He, he destroyed it with the freaking sledgehammer which also caused the uh, desk to break. And then we were trying our own little commentary thing. Lesnar breaks the laptop. Fletch says, oh, a $1,000 laptop. Yep. Yeah, that looked like a $1,000 laptop. $1,000 laptop in shattered and broken into a gazillion pieces. $50 keyboard. Between $50 and $100 keyboard. Rip that sucker to shreds. $300 computer monitor. Yep. That was definitely a 300 buck monitor, I should know. And then, uh, man, oh man, Heyman was absolutely funny on the com. I mean, Heyman going, you could hear Heyman going nuts in the background. I was marking with that. That was awesome. I know somewhere Derek Ferreira was probably laughing at that too, considering that me and Derek used to laugh at Paul Heyman so many times back in our high school days. And let you know that from, uh, back from all our interactions. One of our original members of our Target Hall of Fame, as you all know. He's right up there in our top five, no doubt. And then, of course, I mean, but what Lesnar did in that office, man, wow, unbelievable. That was one of the that was one of the most fun and intense videos I ever saw. Wow, I mean, I lost for words. I mean, what Lesnar did in that office, all the destruction he caused, destroying everything—the computer, the laptop, the keyboard, the computer monitor. Oh, and I forgot to mention that. Um, that awesome, that awesome two grand worth of TV he, he mentioned. I can't believe I forgot about that, boy. But, yep, two grand worth of TV. Yep, that, that, that's money well spent. And then, the, and then Sledgehammer, he, he, he destroys the World Heavyweight Championship belt. And then he destroyed Sledgy too. I mean, how could you not, how could you not have had fun watching that? I mean, Fletch and I, we were going nuts. I mean, I mean, we were marking out like crazy, man. He's gonna, and he's gonna tell you all about that when we get to him. I know he will. I see the big smirk on his face. He knows where he knows where I'm going with this. I mean, we had a lot of fun with it. I mean, we were going nuts. I mean, I felt like we were back in our high school days, if I'm being honest. I mean, when we used to have those late nights on the phone watching Monday Night Raw and talking about the show afterwards and all that during our during our senior year and all that good stuff. Man, I felt like I, I felt like I was back in high school again. It was freaking awesome. It brought back memories. But this was freaking awesome to watch. I, and, I'll, and I'll tell you this right now, it's definitely going in my top 10 segments of the year for 2013, no doubt. You'd be an idiot to leave this off, because this was freaking awesome to watch. Brock Lesnar, say what you want about him, but that was freaking epic. I don't know what else there is to say except best video ever. Enough said. It Go. was it was remarkable. It was brutal. It was done well. It was scripted well, and the whole nine yards. And yeah, there's at least a good, good few thousand dollars worth of damage in that office. And you know, WWE, you know, they wanted to make a point. They wanted to make it look legit. They wanted to make it look real good. Boy, did they do it tonight. And. I'll tell you one thing, and this is just for you fans to know. Anthony Florio, he is in love with the World Heavyweight Championship belt. That's the one belt he would want anything else in this entire world. It doesn't matter. Even though he does love the Intercontinental title, the old school Intercontinental title, and he has his love affair for the Attitude Era WWE Championship, it's that one belt. He said he would have more than anything in this world. 
and Brock Lesnar destroyed that belt, and I, I swear, I thought I was going to have to hold Anthony Florio back because he's like, he destroyed the belt. He destroyed the, the, my, the World Heavyweight title belt. I was oh, waiting. Yeah, I forgot about that. I was literally waiting for him to do this, waiting for him to pull the South Park, you bastard, at it. But he didn't because of the fact that he was so in love with that belt and seeing that destroyed. I mean, I've never seen him freak out like that, man. He was he was like it was like somebody ripped his heart out. It was like a baby girl just just said, I'm not in love with you anymore. You're dumped. It was like one of those type of type of heartbreaks. It was it was tastefully done. It was remarkably done. Well done by WWE, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. Just absolutely, it's it's top five segments of the year. And then Triple H caps it off with the cherry on top, being at the arena, saying, "You know what? You can do whatever you want to do in my office, but this is my real office, and I got a great view of the WWE universe. Great segment whatsoever. Definitely one of the highlights of the evening. All right." Now we're going to switch gears to a six, a six diva tag team fight. It was AJ Lee and the Bella Twins versus the Funkadactyls, Cameron and Naomi, and the reigning and defending Divas champion, uh, Caitlin. Caitlin wins the bow by pinning AJ Lee. Anthony, I hate to do this to you, kid, but it's all all of you. Oh, no. No, not all that bad. I mean, I'm one of the few. I'm one of the few who actually have a soft spot for diva fights um, because I actually do enjoy watching them wrestle. I mean, you guys know that. So, yeah. Um, but as much as I love watching the divas wrestle, and I do, trust me, I do. Um, this, um, yeah, typical ho hum diva fight. I'm sorry. I got I, well. Not not. I, it's between Doug to one star at best for me. I mean, because there was some okay action in this. I mean, it wasn't really all that bad. But, um, I mean, Cameron got was in there a little too long. He still needs a little work. I, I still think he's a little bit of green as grass, if I'm being honest. I mean, Naomi's a good wrestler. I mean, I, I remember her from that diva season of NXT. She was fun to watch. And, I mean, I still think within the next year or so, Naomi's going to be a major player in that diva division. And, hell, I got some diva news. I mean, I actually heard that... Um, some of the some of the FCW prospects were actually in action during the house shows this weekend. I mean, Paige actually wrestled at a house show. Emma wrestled at a house show. I mean, Paige actually teamed up with Caitlyn to take on Emma and Tamina Snuka in uh, in a diva tag match at one of the house shows this weekend. So maybe it's a sign that those baby girls could be coming up. And if so, look out because this could be that shot, that long awaited shot in the arm for the diva division that it really, really needs. I mean, after all, they, let, they were idiot enough to let that Phoenix go. They were idiot enough to let the Torres go, even though he had personal reasons behind it. I can understand it. I mean, they're treating Natalia like, like a fool right now because of the whole Kali stick, which, I, which is beyond the point of go away, if I'm being honest. Deserves much better. I mean, but the thing is, this fight here was, a, was, um, was another one of the worst fights of the night. This was my other worst fight of the night here. Um, but getting to Caitlyn and AJ, I mean... We know it's going to happen. The question is, when is it going to happen? Here's the answer, folks. Extreme Rules in St. Louis, May 19th. That's when it's going to happen. I hope they have a, an extreme stipulation here. I'm hoping we get something like what we saw with Michelle McCool and Layla a couple of years ago. That awesome diva fight. That two, that two and a half star diva fight, which we thought was one of the best diva fights of the last, of maybe the best diva fight of the, in the PG era, if I'm being honest. I mean, that fight was awesome. I mean, do we have extreme rules, but I don't care. It doesn't matter whether it's on whether it's on free TV or on pay-per-view. When that fight goes down, you're here first. AJ Lee's win the belt. And when that happens, we're going to have our first major power couple in WWE since Edge and Vita. What else is there to say? Move on. All right, and we I will move on. Yes, it was a dud. However, actually, no. I'm going to give it between a half a star to one star. I mean, the effort was there. Yes, Cameron 
did the bulk of the fight with AJ Lee in the match. Um, I kind of felt it was a little bit of a, of a downer, but they did keep a nice ebb and flow of it. Then the tag in to to um, to Caitlyn, we finally got the moment. Caitlyn and AJ Lee in the ring together. Um, basically, AJ didn't want no part of it. Try to tag both Bellas. Bellas doesn't want any part of it. They jump off the apron, leaving AJ to suffer the consequences of uh, a spear. One, two, three, and Caitlyn wins it about. Um, I mean, it was good for the most part. I wish we would have seen Naomi in the ring for me personally because we all know what great work ethic she has. And, you know, it's also a breath of fresh air to see that some of the NXT divas are starting to make their way up because, like Anthony said, they need a shot in the arm because I think we can all agree the best women's wrestling right now is coming from TNA. Mike Bullock, it's yours. Yeah, um, I'm going to give it somewhere between quarter to half a star, but this was definitely a, a typical home home diva fight. Uh, what else is there to be said? I mean, but yeah, I mean, I think we're definitely going to get that Caitlin AJ Lee fight at Extreme Rules for the Divas Championship, and I think we're definitely going to see AJ Lee go over, become the, the Divas Champion, and we're definitely going to have that power couple. Uh, since uh, Edge and Lita, but can they match up to Edge and Lita? I don't know. We'll definitely have to wait and see on that. But all in all, typical home home beta fight. I'm I'm just gonna be generous and giving it quarter to a half a half a star at that. So I'm not gonna get into any further details. So let's just move on. All right, the next thing we had was, it was a promo by Mark Henry, interrupted by Sheamus, and then after the promo, it led to a match between Sheamus and Wade Barrett. So, I'm just going to scope this in all together. I thought the promo by Mark Henry was strong. I loved what he did. I love how he referred to him as the world's strongest man. Sheamus came out showing some of his best clips to, to Mark Henry, what he did in like a couple of weeks ago, uh, last week on Monday Night Raw. And I thought the, sh- the match between Sheamus and Wade Barrett was actually pretty strong. I thought it was a very good match. Um, no stretch of the imagination. I'll probably give it about maybe one and three quarters to about two stars. But the post-fight... I gotta believe, and this is where I think, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, I think Sheamus and Mark Henry might be on the verge of a Caribbean strat match because Sheamus got whipped like a dog tonight. I mean, did you see the welts on his back? Good lord. Good grief. I lied the words of Charlie Brown because boy he got whipped like a gutlet mule tonight in in uh, Virginia and that was horrible that was a beat down that was a mugging and yeah somebody got somebody got their ass kicked tonight and that was Sheamus compliments of Mark Henry one and three quarters to two stars for the actual fight promo solid I thought this was very good all the way around Mike Bullock it's yours yeah I agree solid promo uh, from Seamus and Mark Henry and then of course and then it was a, a pretty good match here I mean too short for my liking yeah but there was some very good action here with Seamus and Wade Barrett so I'll go somewhere between one and a half to one and three quarters of a star I agree. I think we're definitely looking at a Sheamus versus Mark Henry match and definitely in a Caribbean strap match. I mean, holy cow, I mean, did you see, I mean, did you see the way Mark Henry used that whip on? I mean, he got whipped like a dog and, and in the words of one of the greatest commentators of all time, J.R., he got whipped like a government mule. And, oh my goodness, I mean, Sheamus really got beat down bad. I mean, and of course, as Mark Henry, as Mark Henry would say, that's what I always do. 
So, with that being said, uh, one and a half to one and three quarters of a star. So, with that being said, uh, Florida was yours. Yeah, one and three quarters to two stars. I mean, the promo segment was solid. I will agree with that. Solid and strong. Um, the match itself was okay. I mean, Sheamus and Barrett have had better matches. I mean, I remember uh, one of the first episodes of the main event, they had a very good three-and-a-half to four-star fight. But that was th- this fight here was nowhere near near close to that one. Um, yeah, I agree. It's going to be Sheamus and Henry at Extreme Rules. And and uh, Mikey's right. I think it's definitely going to be a strap match. I, think it's, I don't think it's going to be a Caribbean strap match. I think it's going to be, you know... A strap match. I mean, I can't. It's been so long since we've seen a strap match, and there would be. I think the last time we had it was the uh, 2009 Extreme Rules in New Orleans, if I recall, with uh, Pump against the late great Eddie Umaga Fat too, who I just mentioned again for the second time tonight. So, yeah, um, that was the last time I can remember a strap match on WWE, unless there was one after that. Um, usually, I have a very sharp memory. You all know that. So, but I'm pretty sure that was the last one I can recall. So. And if, that, and if they're heading in that direction, that ought to be interesting. I mean, Damus, you got a 275-pounder on one end, and then you got an over 400-pounder on the other end. So it'll definitely be probably the heaviest strap match we've ever seen. I mean, the two biggest guys going at it at a strap match. I mean, we've seen some great strap matches over the years. I mean, the greatest strap match I can recall was probably the one with, and Mike, and Fletch knows where I'm going with this, because I know this is one of his favorites. Stone Cold Steve Austin against Savio Vega. How often was that one? At that Beware of the Dog pay per view. The second one. Because of the first one getting rained out. Because of the, the thunderstorms and all that. With not power out in Florence. So, yeah. So, so I definitely, I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to give it a shot. I mean, I don't think it's going to be one of the best fights of the night. I think it's probably going to be a two and a half star fight at best based on body of work, if this is the direction they're indeed going in. But, you know, we'll see. So, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Let's move on. And the final thing we had tonight was the main event King going one on one with Ryback. Um, it ended up being total chaos. The Shield shows up. John Cena shows up. Daniel Bryan shows up. I mean, Mike Bullock, you're the one that's going to have to decipher through all this chaos, man, because it's yours. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, well, first off, with the match, I mean, yeah, I thought, I thought it was a really good match here. I mean, I wasn't too sure of my liking. Uh, with, I mean, it, it got about 8 minutes and uh, 42 seconds. Uh, so if I had to give it a rating, I thought it would say 2 to 2 and a half stars, uh, if, I, if I might say so. But, and, of course, the big thing was that, uh, Ryback uh, grabbing Kay from the uh, the top rope uh, and hit him with a shell shot, and then Ryback wins the match. The shield comes out, and boy, we got ourselves an old-fashioned Johnny Bird. Uh, first it was uh, Dave Bryan, then it was John Cena, and then Ryback comes in with a chair, beats up this one of the shield guys, and Daniel Bryan dies out of the ring and. Now, Dean Amber and I'm over with uh, Roman Reigns or Seth Rollins that was out there. And this way it looked like Cena was going to hit probably uh, hit the, uh, the attitude uh, adjustment on on uh, on one of the field guys. Why that comes, knocks him down with the chair. And, oh, boy, I mean, Cena does not get up. And I don't think we got TV more anymore. It's now... Ryback, right no, that's going to be probably his new catchphrase now. So, is this a homage of things to come for John Cena at Extreme Rules? We'll have to wait and see. Come uh, at the Extreme Rules pay per view when these two fight in that last man standing match. I think it's going to be a brutal match. Uh, I mean, cause, I mean, Extreme Rules. I mean, don't get me wrong. Extreme Rules. I mean. We've seen some uh, good hardcore action uh, in this one, but when it comes to last man standing, this is even more than that because you've got to beat your opponent so bad that he cannot answer to the count of ten. Will this happen to John Cena? 
you're just going to have to wait and find out at Extreme Rules, folks. So, so one thing I'll say, somewhere between two to two and a half stars. So that being said, Anthony is yours. Yeah, um, I thought it was a, a two-star fight at best. Um, you know, this one, I, I wasn't really feeling this one. And, um, this was a meh main event, if I'm being honest. But um, but the post-match, though, that was definitely not meh at the end. That was, yeah, at the end of that. I mean, that was fun to watch. I mean, I mean, great action all around with that. Um, I mean, all I can say right now is um, Cena right back, last man standing, does have the potential to be an awesome fight. Um, I don't think it's going to be the fight of the night by any means. I mean, I'm leaning more towards the ladder match, maybe even Triple H and Lesnar in the cage, if I'm being honest. But... But we'll have to wait and see. You never know. But, I mean, Ryback, his, his ring rework's getting better. I mean, the and Bryan fight was a very good fight. The Kane fight here, not so great. But but it was okay for what it was. I mean, could have been better. But the post-match definitely made up for it. And last man standing is going to be a brutal fight. I do agree. I think it could very well be a lot like what Cena went through last year with Brock Lesnar in that Extreme Rules fight. So... Otherwise, uh, the match was meh, but the post-match was definitely, yeah, I'll leave it at that. So, a so-so way, a solid way to close out what was a solid, okay, but not really overly great edition of Monday Night Raw. So, with that said, let's wrap it up with the review. All right, guys, and let's do it. Let's go right into the review. Anthony Florio, you lead us off. All right, um... I mean, last week's show was definitely one of the best Monday Night Raw's of all time. Well, one of the best Monday Night Raw's of 2013, I should say. I mean, I thought it was a solid 8 to 8 and a quarter out of 10 based on the body of work because we had those four quality matches that were all three stars or higher. I mean, when was the last time we had that on a Monday Night Raw? Uh, uh, never. But here, um, it is a bit of a step down this week, if I'm being honest, um, because there were a lot of... Uh, your typical ho-hum dud enhancement fights, I mean, and of course we also had, um, but then, but we did, we got a quality fight as well, I mean, Dolph Ziggler of Odo Rio, easily the fight of the night, um, the Shield against Kofi and the Usos, I thought that was the second best fight of the night, uh, the Ziggler of Rio was three and a quarter, the, the Shield six-man tag, that was two and a half, um, Two to two and a quarter for the Orton Sandow fight. Uh, two stars for the Kane and Ryback. Um, you had a one star fight for the Diva, the six Diva fight, and and he had a couple of dud enhancement fights with um, Fandango and R Truth, and you also had another dud enhancement with uh, Antonio Cesaro and Jack Ryder. Although Antonio Cesaro looked the best he's looked in a long, long time. Um, the Brock Lesnar thing, I mean, that was freaking unbelievable. That was. Uh, that was awesome beyond words and definitely within the top five for our top five segments of the year in 2013, absolutely far none. Um, and then, of course, you um, and then you also had um, the opening promo at the beginning and then the post match at the end. Um, last week was better. This week was a, a bit of a step down. But I'm going to give it a thumbs up, up just, a, just a slight thumbs up, not an overwhelming thumbs up like last week was, but... If I'm going to be honest, i got to score this somewhere between six to six at worst to six and a half at best. I mean, it was an enjoyable show for the most part. I mean, there were some things I could have done without, but, you know, the Extreme Rules card is now slowly starting to take shape now. Cena, right back, last man standing, triple threat ladder match for the world title. Uh, the Steel Cage match with Triple H and Lesnar. Seamus against Mark Henry. You gotta believe that's gonna be a strap match. Randy Orton in the Big Show. Not sure what they're gonna do with that one. Um, other two other fights we could see. Well, three other fights we could see. Shield against Team Hell No for the tag team titles. Don't know how they'll do that. Caitlin and AJ Lee for the Divas belt. You know they're gonna do that. And then of course Chris Jericho and Fandango, which I think is gonna be false count anywhere. That's just how I feel. But we'll have to wait and see. But like I said earlier, I'll say it again. Extreme Rules definitely shaping up to be for the third year in a row. A damn good show. That could be even better. That could trump WrestleMania one more time. So, um, six to six and a half out of ten at best for me. Bit of a 
Seth Jarrett, but it was a good show for the most part. So, with that said, let's, let's go on to you. Solid event, definitely no doubt about it. I can go six, six and a quarter this week. Um, like you said, I mean, the promo segment with Cena and Ryback at the very beginning of the show was very good. I enjoyed it. The send out and Orton fight, one and a half stars. I really didn't like it because it was more of a berry job. Fandango and R Truth don't even get me started. Um, Del Rio and Dolph Ziggler, without a doubt, was the fight of the night. I enjoyed it, loved it. Uh, three stars. And then the Shield, Kofi, and the Usos, two and, two, and a, two and a half stars. I thought another solid match, without a doubt. And I thought it was a nice little trend. It was okay, to say the very least. Um, yes, the Ryder uh, Cesaro was a wash. But the reason why it was so good at the end was because Antonio Cesaro is back. It looks like he's out of the doghouse, and he looked so damn good tonight. Um, definitely, for me, one of the MVPs of tonight's Monday Night Raw, without a doubt. Um, then, once we got into the Triple H, Paul Heyman, and Brock Lesnar, and the destruction of the, of the WWE office, it was just, without a doubt, the best moment of the night. It's the most talked about moment of the night. And then the defense play is okay. The, the, the Mark Henry promo, good, solid. They had a decent match with Sheamus and Ray Barrett. And then a very good main event. So all in all, I think it was good, not great. Um, six to six and a quarter, like Anthony said. Thumb slightly in the middle, but I could I can give it like one thumb up, one like this throughout the night. That's, that's how I'm going to call it. Mike Bullock, it's yours. Yeah, uh, I agree. Um, thumbs slightly up uh, on this uh, on this Monday Night Raw, and I'll say six and a quarter to six and a half out of out of ten. I mean, we had some good fights with uh, Alberto Del Rio and uh, and uh, Dolph Ziggler and Ryback uh, against Kane and what have you, and then so but we did have our typical dud enhancement matches that. Uh, I mean, you guys pretty much touched on everything else, so six and a quarter to six and a half out of ten. Thumbs slightly up, uh, but all in all, still a good show. So with that being said, let's get to our interactive yes or no questions. All right, gentlemen, and we will indeed do that, and we're going to start it off right now. Here it is. During the weekend, um, we made the announcement on Strictly Sports that we were going to do a yes-no segment, but we did something that was even more bigger. We asked you fans to log on to either our Twitter page at The Wrestling Forum or at The Wrestling Forum's Facebook page. And I put announcements up in other groups, of course, my page, Mike Fletcher, Anthony, and Mike Bullock. And we asked you fans to give us questions. What did you want us to talk about? What yes-no questions did you have from us? And, well, I'll tell you, fellas, it was an overwhelming response. We did get some fans who wanted to ask us a question, and we're going to do it right now. So the first question and this is from Yasmin Scott from Australia. So we would like to thank you, Yasmin, for, for this question. And her question, her yes, no, is this. Do you think the WWE are going to end up using all the new talent? Guys like Antonio Cesaro, The Shield, Damian Sandow, Biggie Langston, etc., etc., correctly to use them to their to the best of their abilities or will they end up as mid card fodder slash jobbers? Michael Bullock, what do you think about this about this one? Hmm. Alright, uh well, what was the question? If they were gonna be mid card jobbers or uh Let's go. Pay, all right. Let's let's just let's try to go this by a case by case basis. Let's go, let's let's I guess go individually. Then, do you think Antonio Cesaro will be um, used correctly to the best of his ability, or do you think he'll end up as a make card jobber? All right. Uh, well, like I'm Antonio Cesaro, I mean. When 
they when they finally took him off uh, off with the with Oksana, I mean, he was getting a real good push uh, when he was the United States champion, and then all of a sudden, uh, going into WrestleMania, they made him look like a look like a tool, and that's not right. Uh, but after the big win tonight, I mean, it looks like he's back. So all I can say is uh, I I do see some good progress with Antonio Cesaro, so I'm willing to give him a chance, and I don't think he's going to be a mid card jobber. I mean, I like his body of work. And during his reign as the uh, United States champion, we saw him in some really good matches. Uh, so, to me, I'm, I don't think he's going to be a mid-card uh, jobber in Michaels. I think he's, I mean, if he does get that United States job, title back, he would it first. I think he's going to get a big-time push. So, I think he'll definitely get that push uh, sooner. I mean, soon. So, that being said, Anthony... Oh, without question. I mean, I agree. Um, Antonio Cesaro is definitely going to be a um, a main event player in the future. I mean, you know what? I'm going I'm to be honest here. Um, if you guys had asked me this question about two or three weeks ago, maybe even a month ago, I would have said maybe even, I, I probably would have had the balls to say no, if I'm being honest. But... After what we saw tonight, I said he's back, and I meant it. So I think he's on his way out of the doghouse and back up to where he should be, damn near the top. I mean, I think within within the next year or two, with a little more seasoning, he has the ingredients, and he will be. Yeah, he definitely has the, the ingredients and the pedigree to be a future WWE or World Heavyweight Champion. I think he's definitely got the body of work for it. I mean... Like I said earlier, I mean, CM Punk, he went to bat for the guy. I mean, what else is there to say? I mean, if, if you've got the best in the world and the number two guy in the company pop going to bat for you, that says a lot about the body of work and how much he thinks of it. So, yeah. Um, no contest here. Is, will Antonio Cesaro be a main event player for years to come? Oh, hell yeah. What else is there to say? Move on. I totally agree with you guys. I think Cesaro, you know what? He was in the doghouse for a little bit. They started doing the yodeling thing on him. He, I think he's back, more rejuvenated. Like I said, the thing that really stood out tonight, not only was his victory, but the after the match promo that he did, it sounded like Cesaro finally is back and better than ever. All right, guys. So let's, let's talk about the next one that uh, Jasmine... Uh, talked about do you believe the shield will be used correctly to the best of their abilities or do you think over time that they'll end up being a bunch of jobbers Anthony I give that to you just like with Antonio Cesaro I'm going to say the same thing for the shield they are going to be used to their fullest potential this is a definite yes for me I'm definitely buying the shield no question about it I mean I'm we all love their body of work. I mean, they have been so fun to watch. I said it earlier during the Raw review. I'll say it again. Best WWE stable in years. They have put, they have literally put the Nexus and the core combined to shame. I mean, I don't know what else there is to say. I mean, Ambrose is awesome. Rollins is awesome. I know there was some doubt about Roman Reigns at the start, but he has quietly become the best kept secret in WWE in a long time. And, he has definitely been our biggest surprise, and we've loved his body of work. Love all three of these guys, and, you know, uh, at first I thought they were a little bit overexposed at first, but as time's gone on, I mean, they have grown on me quite a bit, and all I can say right now is I'm loving their body of work. I mean, WWE is very high up on it, on them. I, 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 all, I no question about it, know that, and... There's nothing left to say here except next stop for the Shield, WWE Tag Team Champions. We we will. Sum it all up. Yes, but the Shield will be used to their fullest potential. If, if WWE even had the audacity to put these guys as mid-card fodder, it would be yet another WWE mistake. Enough said. Move on. 
All right, and I will agree with Anthony again. And we and there's actually more about the shield because we got because it seems like the shield become a very hot topic because I'm checking the list here and there's a lot of shield questions. So the shield is going to get a lot of yes and no's here tonight, but they are without a doubt the best stable tag team out there, and they definitely are groomed to be the next WWE tag team champions. No doubt about that. Mike Bullock, it's yours. I will be using it, and I say yes, they will be used correctly. I mean, you think the work at the, their body of work, I mean, ever since they made their debut in WWE, they've been really good, and uh, they use that triple foul bomb on so many different guys, the uh, Ryback, Kane, Ring of Bright, and yes, unfortunately, sorry I have to bring this up, my man, the Undertaker, felt my wrath of it. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, with the way they've been going at it, they're definitely going to get a tag team title shot, and they're going to be the new tag team champions. You heard it here first, so. So I think, yes, they will be used correctly. And if WWE, at some point, misuses them correctly, just like as the Shield would say, it would be a total injustice. So, move on. All right. The third person that she referred to was Damien Sandow. Now, Sandow is a little bit of a complicated story because of the fact that, you know, at the very beginning, he is very good on the mic. I mean, he is money on the mic. His wrestling skills is very good. Um, there is some times where he gets he t- rises us up and then they knock him back down a little bit. I think he is going to be used correctly. I mean, his mic skills shows that he is definitely going to be a, ma- a major player. I just don't know right now if he is going to be... He's not going to be a jobber. I can't say that. He's not going to be a lower mid-card father either. I think right now he's probably mid-card to upper mid-card right now on the... But he's nowhere near the cusp of main event level. I think right now he's just stuck in the middle and they really don't know where to put him. Even though they put him in a great partnership with um, Cody Rhodes, Team Rhodes Scholars, and we'll wait and see what happens there. But at the end of the day, is he going to be used to the best of his abilities? I have to say yes, but it's very cautious to say the very least. Mike Bullock, it's yours. Yeah, I agree with you, but I mean, I don't think there'll be, um, I don't think there'll be much of a jobber because, uh, I mean, he's been involved in some, in some good matches. I mean, okay matches, uh, to be exact. I mean, he's been, I mean, he's been much of a mid-card, uh, guy and nowhere near ready to main event, uh, status. So, I'm gonna give a slight yes, uh, that they're all using correctly, but, Somehow I still fear that they're going to misuse him, but as of right now, a slight yes, Donald. So with that being said, Barry was there. Yeah, um, this is, a, this is a bit of a tough one because, you know, Damian Sandow, he is money on the mic. We all know that. He draws great heel heat. There's no question about that. Um, the in-ring work, yes. I mean, he is a good wrestler. He is a good wrestler. He's not a great wrestler. He's a good wrestler. I mean, he can wrestle. But he's nowhere near the caliber of a CM Punk or a Brian by any means. But but still, he's getting up there. I mean, I do think eventually he's going to get... I think, he's, I think he will get a title. He's going to win a belt at some point. I don't know which belt he's going to win. Um, but I could definitely see him holding a singles title within the next year or so, if I'm being honest. Because I think... Um, I have heard that that Vince McMahon. I heard that Vince wanted to push this guy after WrestleMania. That's what that was what I was hearing in the cards. Um, obviously, if you saw what happened tonight, I mean, obviously that's not the case because you know he got buried by Randy Orton. What else is there to say about that? Um, but I still think that he and Cody Rhodes should have gotten at least one run with the WWE Tag Team Championship. If I'm being honest, um, but they uh, they missed the mark on that. Um, I love his body of work, yes. But do I think he's going to be a main event player anytime soon? No. 
will he, like, years down the line? The only way he will be is if he's still around after Cena and or CM Punk or Randy Orton or whatever finally decides to call it quits. But as long as those guys have um, have their drive and the passion to keep going at their ages, he ain't going to be a main eventer anytime soon. So if I'm being honest, I got to go neutral here because I want to say yes, I want to say no, but I can't. So I'm going to have to a la PCI flood. You know where I'm going with this. I'm going to have to give this a push if I'm being honest. So let's just move on. And you know how much I hate when you push. <laughs> All right. The last guy that she wanted me to refer to was Big E Langston. Do you believe that Big E Langston will be used correctly to the best of his abilities? Or do you think that he'll end up as a mid car father slash jobber? Mike Bullock, it's to you. All right. When it comes to uh, Big E Langston, I mean, when we first brought along, he was much more somewhat of like a, a bodyguard uh, to Dolph Ziggler. We didn't see him wrestle for the first time. I think it was a, until uh, WrestleMania in that uh, tag team match uh, with Team Helmo against uh, Dolph Ziggler and Biggie Langston. And of course, as, uh, as you guys have mentioned, he is the, uh, the NXT champion uh, over on NXT. So, to me, I think... <laughs> I think that was correctly, I mean, it, I mean, you see what he's done. I mean, he's pretty much a powerhouse. I mean, look at what he's done to guys like uh, John Cena and Kane. I mean, I could say, it, I'm, I mean, you got to give this guy a chance. I mean, will he be a main event level uh, type of guy? I, I don't think he, I mean, he's definitely not ready yet, but with a little bit of seasoning, Maybe he will be in a, in a few years to come. So I say they will use him correctly. So that being said, Anthony, it's your... Another one I'm torn on here. I mean, you know, his body of work is uh, is decent at best. I mean, yeah, Bullock is right. I mean, they brought him in to be an enforcer bodyguard for, for uh, Dolph Ziggler and for uh, AJ Lee. Um, after that whole thing went about, after the TLC pay-per-view, um, you remember I, I, I teased an interesting scenario a couple of weeks ago here on the forum um, when I read a, I read a, I read a Monday Night Raw review on uh, one of our favorite news sites and one of the one of the readers suggested a possibility that Biggie Langston could win the Money in the Bank ladder match um, at the Money in the Bank pay per view this summer and who knows maybe cash in on Dolph Ziggler if he's still the World Heavyweight Champion create a feud between those two. I mean, anything is possible. I'm not going to rule that out. Um, but I'm just not sure. I mean, he's only wrestled once. That was at WrestleMania. Like, well, like, like, well no, he, he's wrestled a few times. I mean, that um, unique but god-awful triple threat match last week with uh, Ricardo Rodriguez and Zeb Coulter. I mean, he also wrestled in that uh, triple threat tag team match on SmackDown where a Big E team with... Uh, Dolph Ziggler to take on Del Rio and Rodriguez and Swagger and Coulter. Um, he is the NXT champion right now. Um, as you know, he defeated uh, Shield member Seth Rollins to win that title a number of months back at a taping. So <clears throat> this is another tough one for me. Um, I, I like his body of work, but right now, until I see more, I'm going to have to reluctantly say no to uh, Biggie Langston for now. I mean, I'd like to see, I want to, only because I haven't, I need to see more of him before I, I can really give him, take him seriously. I mean, I would love for him to do well. I mean, me personally, I would love to see him go against Ziggler for the world title in the summer. That'd be cool. Maybe even SummerSlam, maybe Night of Champions. I don't know. I know it's wishful thinking. I know, um, I know that that might, that might not happen, but... I'm not going to rule it out. I mean, when I read that scenario, I'm like, hmm, I, I could kind of see that happening. I would love to see that happen. I mean, it would be, if you were to enter the world title scene this summer, that would be the biggest breath of fresh air for that for that picture in a long, long time. It would, and I would love to see it. But for right now, I love Biggie Langston, I do. But right now, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to say no on this one for now. 
All right, and I actually agree. Um, I actually think that Big E will get an opportunity, and I do believe he is a future champion in waiting. Um, Anthony, I, I actually would think that, you know, I could see Big E win, like, the U.S. title or the Intercontinental title, really pro- promote himself as a big name, and then once he wins the money in the bank, then you would think that, you know, big, you know, Ziggler and AJ will probably push him to try to go after the WWE Championship uh, to prove that, you know, I'm, you know, we could be the three world champions together, this and that. But I think Ziggler's ego is going to come back to bite him in the rear end because once Big E starts thinking, you know, why do I have to go after the WWE title? This, this means I can go after any title I want and I'm going to come after you. He could always surprise cash in and become the champion. So I, I have to say yes. I have to say that I do believe he will be a champion. All right. Now the next, the next Q&A that we have is actually from our super fan Matt Ward. He provided us with three questions. And the first question he said is, should the WWE do the three bird rule for the Shield to bring back some prestige back to the tag team division? Now, if you remember, the three bird rule is actually what Demolition used to do when they had three members, Axe, Ash, and Crush, and with the Spirit Squad when they had five members that any two members can represent and in their can represent at any time if they are tag team champions or whatever they be. Um, and I believe this is to you, Anthony Boyer. So, do you think WWE should do this rebirth rule for the Shield? Uh, your your audio was a little fuzzy there, Flat. Uh, I know it's something about the Shield and the tag team titles. Um, so, I'm sorry about that. Um, the should they? There? Should they? Matt Ward is asking, should WWE do the free bird rule for the Shield to per, to bring back some prestige back to the tag team division, a la the demolition rule or what the Spirit Squad used to do back in the day? Uh, I think so. I mean, I, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, I still think they're going to win them. I think it's going to be at Extreme Rules that when, when it does. Uh, which two members it could be. I mean, personally, I think it should be Seth Rollins and uh, Roman Reigns holding those belts. I think Dean Ambrose should, should get a singles push, if I'm being honest with you, because Ambrose has the most upside of the three, as we all know. I mean, we, we've all seen his body of work. I mean, you, you like know more than anybody about Dean Ambrose's body of work. I mean, you've seen more FCW and NXT videos than anybody. I mean, you know more about that stuff than we do. So, um, I mean... I'd love to see it. I mean, I, I, I've gone on the record many times on this show saying that that's exactly what they were going to do. I mean, I didn't know that. Was, I mean, I knew there was a pre rule. I just didn't. I never knew what it meant. But now that I know what it means, I mean, oh, yeah, I definitely see it. So should they do it if they win the tight titles at Extreme Rules, which I think that's when it's going to happen? Yes, I would love to see that. So which two members it will be, I don't know. I'm still, I still think it should be Rollins and Reigns. I think Ambrose should, I think Ambrose should be getting a singles push by this point. So... But right now, keep them together. I like how they're doing it. So they have plenty of time to build them. So they got so much upside, it's not even funny. Let's just move on. Indeed, I truly have to say yes with this one. This is a no doubt about it. Um, the free bird rule, like I said, the only time we've ever seen it in WWE history was when Demolition had Axe, Smash, and Crush uh, when they were the champions. And there were some times where Crush and Smash were together. There was times where Crush and Axe was together. Uh, and then, of course, Axe and Smash. And they utilized them as tag team champions. They all were recognized as champions. And you remember the Spirit Squad, they had five members. And there was one night where two members, you know, fought and then another two fought. And they just kept the belt as is. So we'll wait and see what happens there. Uh, Mike Bullock, it's yours. Yeah. I'll say yes to what I mean with, the, with that rule. I mean, like I said, I mean, I I do agree that Shield will become the tag team champions, but which two 
ุตติที่เรามา